Hi friends, thanks for joining me here at Funny It's Working Mama. My name is Heather. Now, can you believe fall has arrived? It's been around for a couple, well, a couple weeks, maybe almost a month, and Thanksgiving is just around the corner. Have you started planning your, your meal plan for your family? Well, if you have or need some inspiration or most impor importantly, want to stay on budget, you have come to the right place. I have a menu that includes all the wonderful sides that we like at Thanksgiving, an appetizer as well as a dessert, and of course, that delicious turkey for all under $100 that could feed up to 12 people. I'm excited to share with you. It's going to be a three part videos, I guess you'd call series. And it's all about Thanksgiving. The first one is going to go over a few things. One, what's on the menu. And then two, how much we're going to spend. Three, how much of this is going to feed people and how we can pare it down if you're having a smaller family gathering. And four, starting of the recipes. In this particular episode, I'm going to share with you three Thanksgiving recipes. And in the second video, I'm going to share with you some more Thanksgiving recipes. And the third and final recipe or episode, I'm going to share with you on how I make my turkey. So guys, get ready and get prepared. Get your pens out because I'm going to share with you some delicious Thanksgiving recipes that you're going to have to put on your table for this Thanksgiving. So what is on the Thanksgiving menu this Thanksgiving? Well, we have the turkey, obviously, and the turkey will be on my third episode because that is quite of a process that I, that I like to do. I feel like I have made or have found the perfect way to cook a turkey to where it's got that crispy, that crispy skin that everyone likes, but it's moist and delicious until you finish it. And that means not only when you get it to the table, but when you put it in the fridge and reheat it, it still has a moist flavor and texture to the meat. So I will share with that on my last and third episode. Now, moving on from the turkey to the sides, because let's just be honest, we all love the sides. We're gonna have mashed potatoes and gravy. We're gonna mac and cheese, dressing, as well as broccoli salad, green bean casserole, in which in this case, it's actually green bean a gratin. You'll see what I mean. Similar things, but just a different style. Then we're going to have cranberry sauce, and I know some of you are skeptic on that, and some of you are in for it, but I'm going to give you my recipe that I have perfected for cranberry sauce. And then we're going to have an appetizer that is not going to fill everyone up, but just take the edge off to getting them prepared for the Thanksgiving dinner. And then of course, you gotta round it out with a de delicious dessert. So friends, let's start with first, the green bean a gratin, which is better known to some, a green bean casserole. This is green bean a gratin, or better known or look to be green bean casserole. It's just a little bit of faint, a little bit fancier with some more ingredients or rich ingredients. You wanna take a small pan, put about two tablespoons of oil, I'm using olive oil, and then add eight ounces of sliced mushrooms to the pan. Make sure the mushrooms are, is mixed really well in the warmed uh, olive oil or whatever oil you choose. You wanna cook it for three to four minutes, and then as you can see, they're breaking down. You wanna put a little bit of salt on it, just a little bit. Mix the salt and mushrooms well together. Now, as it's cooking, you want to start another pan which is going to make the delicious creamy sauce that makes i don't know green bean casserole or green bell gratin delicious so as your mushrooms are continuing to cook and break down you want to start with the sauce four tablespoons of melted butter and i'm adding one fourth of a cup of diced onions small diced onions. If you can find a shallot, you would that would be great as well. I have a hard time finding shallots in my area. You could use one fourth of a cup of diced shallots. Today, I'm just using onions. 
because that's all I could find. Once the onions have had a time to break down into the butter and saute to, and soften, then that's when I'm adding four cloves of garlic. Now I'm choosing to press my garlic into this sauce. If you don't have a garlic press, just make sure your four cloves of garlic is very finely diced, minced before adding it to the butter and onion mixture. You don't want chunks of garlic in the sauce. Make sure the garlic is well incorporated with the onions and butter. Allow it to saute together and soften. Once everything starts to smell that wonderful garlic smell, that's when you know it's time to add one third of a cup of flour. As you can see, I sprinkled a little bit of flour in first. I didn't add the whole one third of a cup. If you put all of the flour into the pan all at once, all it's gonna do is just clump up and it's just almost impossible to get it unclumped. So sprinkle a little bit at a time. Once you see that that flour is well incorporated into the butter and onion mixture, then sprinkle a little bit more. Do that until the entire one third of a cup of flour is well incorporated into the butter, onion, and garlic mixture. As you can see, it's really developing a really nice roux. This roux is going to make that nice, thick, creamy sauce that many people enjoy in a green bean casserole. The time to add two cups of milk as well as a half a cup of heavy cream. I mix the two cups of milk and a half a cup of heavy cream together and I warmed it because I did not want to add the milk and heavy cream to the hot pan cold. If you do that, it brings the temperature of the pan down and it, then it takes forever for that roux to develop into a sauce. So do yourself a favor, heat up your cream and milk before adding it to, a, to the pan. Now, as you can see, I'm adding the milk and cream to the pan slowly. I'm not dumping it all in. I'm adding a little bit at a time, making sure that the roux is getting mixed well with the milk and the heavy cream. All right, as you can see, the milk is all incorporated into that roux, and we want to add all the spices in. Now, I have pre-measured all these spices, mixed them well together, and adding them to the sauce. What the spices, what, the spices are the following. You want to put in a half of a teaspoon of black pepper, and then one fourth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. Now I have whole nutmeg that I grate up to make the fourth of a teaspoon. You can use already grated nutmeg if you have that already on hand. Then I add one and a half teaspoons of salt. Make sure it's mixed really well together. Then you wanna add in two tablespoons of fresh squeezed lemon. Make sure the lemon is stirred in well to the sauce. The sauce at this point has cooked just a little bit, just a couple minutes, and it's starting to thicken just a bit. Once you have mixed in your lemon juice, you wanna add in a half a cup of freshly grated Parmesan cheese. Do not use the already grated parm in the bag. Friends, that anti caking agent just is it can ruin a consistency of a sauce so do yourself a favor and grade your own parmesan cheese once the parm is well melted into the sauce that's when you want to add in your cooked sauteed mushrooms and then one and a half pounds of green beans i am using frozen green beans one because it's a whole lot easier and two it tastes better than the can in reference to this particular recipe. Now, if you want to use fresh green beans, just make sure you trim them, wash them, cut them, blanch them, then add them, add them to the dish. As you can see, that's a lot more steps and frozen green beans work just perfectly. So do yourself a favor and just add one and a half pounds of frozen green beans to this dish. Once you get this mixed well, the mushrooms and the green beans, mixed well into the white sauce, then you want to make sure that you get a casserole dish out, 
get it well greased and pull pour the entire contents of that sauce and mushrooms and green beans to the casserole dish and then you want to top it with that onion mixture or that the french onion fried onion top it with that if you're not a fan of that then just go ahead and take some butter or olive oil and do some breadcrumbs or panko and then top uh, your green bean a gratin if you choose we're an onion fan so we're going to go ahead and top it with the french fried onions once you have it topped with whatever topping you choose whether it's the onions or the panko or breadcrumb make sure you put some additional parmesan cheese on it friends do yourself a favor again and make sure you do it freshly grated add as much parm as you want as you can see i'm doing a nice layer on top of those french fried onions you want to preheat the oven to 375 degrees and cook it to 40 to 45 minutes uncovered some of you guys might be wondering why i have chosen this particular recipe instead of doing the traditional green bean casserole that includes like the cream of mushroom and i think the cream of chicken and the canned green beans and all that jazz so i didn't grow up with green bean casserole and i don't think my husband did and i just feel whatever reason i just feel like it has to be on the table i'm not sure why and if i just put just green beans on the table well that's just like another day so i felt like i needed to spice it up a little bit meaning green beans everyone likes it meaning green beans not the casserole but no one seemed to really desire the green bean casserole the traditional way they would eat it but wouldn't go back to seconds it would never be eaten up after the leftovers so then i went to a different recipe and I tried several recipes. Some were really bougie with lots of expensive ingredients and still no one really cared for it. So I kept searching and searching and searching because I feel like, again, everyone loves green beans, but I need to step it up a notch when it gets to the Thanksgiving table. So that's how I found that recipe, the green bean au gratin. So it's similar to the recipe other than it's fresher in, uh, I would call like almost like a bechamel sauce uh, because it has the heavy cream in it, it has the butter, um, and you can even make it lighter with just regular milk if you choose. Different flavors, but it still meets the same standard of the creaminess that I think people like in a green bean casserole. So if you're not a fan, if you're not a fan of green bean casserole, I would encourage you to give this one a try because it checked the box with my family. They actually, when I made it the first time and I told them why I was giving the taste test, they all said, this checks the box. You got to put this on the table. It is the recipe for green beans. If you're one of stepping up a notch, that needs to be on the table on Thanksgiving. Mac and cheese, I can tell you, I'm not, I'm not sure what it's like in other parts of the United States. Please comment below if mac and cheese is like the must that needs to be on your table. But I do know in the South is is an expectation. I do believe that they would forego the dressing and eat the mac and cheese <laughs> and prefer the mac and cheese if they had the choice. So mac and cheese is a staple, at least at our Thanksgiving dinner. And I have found the perfect recipe that is a tried and true favorite. Now what I would say, in the South, what would be different from a regular mac and cheese is a lot of mac and cheese, they like it saucy, really saucy, um, like the Kraft Deluxe mac and cheese that you see in the boxes with the creamy cheese. With a Southern mac and cheese, it's a mac and cheese bake where it starts on the stove with a roux and then it finishes it, finish it in the oven with a cheesy topping on the on top of it baked to a tad little bit of brown and a tad bit of the crisp so i'm going to share with you my mac and cheese and it's not hard at all it's a lot of grating of cheese i can tell you you don't want to use the bag cheese do not use the bag cheese it affects the texture and consistency of it and if you're going to freeze it before thanksgiving so if you can make this you can make this two months ahead of time three months ahead of time and freeze it thawed out and it will be perfect so this is definitely a recipe that you can make ahead of time however if you if you use the bag already grated cheese it will change the consistency 
and then it really doesn't do well once you freeze it. So take the time. It's worth it. It's Thanksgiving, y'all. Grate that cheese. It's worth it. The flavor is so different. The consistency is so much better. So grade your cheese. Let me show you how to make my mac and cheese. All right, friends, this is my macaroni and cheese. It will make eight to 12 servings, eight heavy, uh, heavy, heavy helpings of uh, mac and cheese or 12 regular servings of mac and cheese. You want to start off with a large stock pan, melt six tablespoons of butter. Once the butter has melted, then you want to add one fourth of a cup of all purpose flour and you want to make sure that flour is well incorporated in that butter. You don't want to skimp on the butter because the, the butter will allow the the amount of butter that I've told you to put into this mac and cheese will allow that flour to get well incorporated and develop a nice smooth roux. Then once the flour is well incorporated into the butter that's when you want to stir in a half a cup of chopped onions. Now the on you want to allow the onions to soften in the butter and the flour for about five to six minutes. You want to stir occasionally. Once that has um, softened a little bit then you want to add two teaspoons of dried mustard to the pan and as you can see I'm adding the two teaspoons and then I finished the rest it was just a scotch left at the bottom of the container so I just poured the rest of it in it wasn't that much more and you want to get that well incorporated into the onions and the roux mixture almost like a little bit of brown not much just a little bit of brown and now you want to add in four cups of milk. You can use whole milk, you can use skim milk, you can use 2%, whatever milk you have, you can use. Now you want to drizzle the milk in until you start to see all those clumps get well incorporated in the milk and become smooth. Do not dump it all in. Friends, don't do that. It you'll never be able to get the clumps out. So tr just drizzle in the milk until you start to see about, if you can see the pan now, that's about what you're looking for because you're starting to see all the milk and the onions and the um, flour getting well incorporated. So I've sped the video up so um, it won't, <laughs> you don't have to sit there for another eight minutes watching me do this. It does take uh, about five minutes, this process, five to eight minutes, uh, because you don't want, again, to rush, th rush that process. Once you have it um, all mixed together, then you want it to start to get it thickened. The thickening process will take about five minutes. Keep it on medium heat, friends. Do not crank that up. Make sure you stand close by and mix it every now and then. Once you've got the mixture thickened, you want to add two cups of sharp shredded cheese, two cups of Monterey Jack cheese, and two cups of Parmesan cheese. Do not use the already shredded cheese, friends. It does not turn out, I mean, it will be good, but that anti-caking, um, stuff that they put into those already shredded cheese bags just does not do a, it doesn't provide it a great consistency and it does not freeze well do yourself a favor and shred your own cheese once you have all your cheese shredded now keep in mind once you start adding the cheese turn off your burner and then add your cheese once your cheese is well incorporated then that is when you want to add one pound of elbow macaroni now, I started my cooking my elbow macaroni when I started cooking my roux and preparing my cheese sauce because I wanted it to sort of coincide together. So cook your macaroni, um, have it ready so that way once your cheese sauce is done, you can start adding in your macaroni, your macaroni pasta to the mixture. Once it's well mixed together, you want to grease a, th a 13 by nine casserole pan and make sure your macaroni and cheese is nice and e e even in the pan so that way it cooks evenly. And then I just top it with more shredded uh, sharp cheddar cheese and more shredded Monterey Jack cheese and more shredded Parmesan cheese. There's no measurement here, friends. If whatever you have and whatever you feel, you just top uh, that macaroni and cheese on top of it. You don't have to add uh, the additional cheese on top. However, 
I like to because I like the uh, crispiness brownness of the cheese once it is compl completed uh, cooking once your dish is ready to go you can set this in the refrigerator several days ahead of time or freeze it and thaw it out the night before then the next day you want to set the oven at 350 degrees you want to cook it for about 40 minutes you don't have to cover it check it at 30 minutes and then if you need some additional time you can always add another 10 minutes now if you're cooking it with another dish in the oven because sometimes you have to do that on a thanksgiving holiday it will probably take you about 45 to 50 minutes because you have that extra dish in your oven cooking so just keep that in mind if you're trying to cook double things in the oven during your thanksgiving meal now I topped it with the remainder cheese. I did add a little bit more pepper to that if you're wondering what I added. I did add additional pepper. And friends, I'm gonna tell you, it comes out just perfectly. This is what I like. I love that topping right there. Turned out perfectly. That crunchiness of that cheese, perfect addition to your Thanksgiving meal. Cranberry sauce or the cranberry jelly. Which camp are you? Put in the comments below. Are you cranberry jelly? or cranberry sauce and the difference obviously is one has the clumpiness of the uh, cranberries and one does not um i know it's sort of famous as like the can there are very they, there are people out there that are just firm that they have to have the can cranberry where it comes out like a log and there's others that just don't like it they like the sauce with the actual like clumps of cranberries in it i will tell you I wasn't a fan of either at all, at all. <laughs> However, again, there are people that like it and that come to our Thanksgiving. They like it with our turkey and they like it with their leftover turkey sandwiches. So I had to figure out a healthy balance and something that I would actually eat. And I will say my daughter, who is the pickiest, Ava, is the pickiest eater. She actually really enjoys this cranberry sauce recipe. It is really simple, simple ingredients. And I will tell you friends, it is worth putting on the table. Let me show you how I make it. And I will say you can make this recipe several days ahead of time and keep it in your fridge waiting for you to place it on the table. So you don't have to make it the day up. And actually, it's actually better if you make it several days ahead of time. Citrus cranberry sauce. You want to start with a medium sized saucepan and either 12 ounces, which is typically the size fresh cranberries come in, or 16 ounces. 12 or 16 will work just fine. You can use fresh or frozen. You want to pour them in the saucepan, pick out any of the cranberries that don't look great or maybe not completely ripe, any stems or rocks. Once you've picked through the cranberries, then you want to wash them really well and then put them back into the saucepan. And this is when you wanna add all the delicious ingredients. And surprisingly, there's not a lot of it. You wanna do a half of a cup of apple juice, apple cider, or orange juice. I did orange juice. Half a teaspoon of salt and one cup of white sugar. Make sure you mix all of those ingredients really well with the cranberries. And once you have accomplished that, then you want to add one cinnamon stick right there in the middle. Now this comes the dedication part, but that makes this is what makes it citrus. You want to zest one medium orange, all of it. Don't skimp, use every bit of that zest and make sure you don't get the white pith, just that orange goodness on the outside of that orange. Now cook it on medium high heat you don't need to cover it. And then while it is cooking, then you wanna use that orange and cut the orange up. Now we're gonna use every bit of that zested orange in this recipe. As you can see, I cut it in half and I took out, off all the peel. And I'm gonna cut the segments out of it. Now the reason why I cut it in half is because it makes cutting the seg for me anyway it makes cutting the segments out a lot easier as you can see i'm pulling away the membrane uh, from the segment the orange segment so it makes the process go a lot faster you have to cut the segment segments up anyway so this sort of 
as you can see that membrane I just peel it right off and then you're just right you're left just with that orange segment so it makes it a lot easier you can do it however you would like but for me this seems the easiest way and you have to cut the segments up in half anyway so there we go it makes it easy I do pick through to make sure I don't have large chunks cut any of the chunks up that I feel like needs to be more bite size you're gonna put this in the uh, cranberry sauce so you want to see the orange as you don't want it so small that you can't recognize that there's an orange in it now this has been cooking for about 12 minutes as you can see the cranberries are starting to break down it's starting to get a really nice sauce but it still needs some additional cooking time so stir it really well and make sure it's not getting way too hot or way too overboiled. You might need to crank it down to about medium heat, but cover it to make sure that those um, cranberries don't pop and get all over your, 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 your stove. Now, as you can see, now this has been cooking for another eight minutes. I've allowed it to cook, and this is what you want it to look like. When it gets to this consistency, that's when you know it's done. The sauce is ready to cool down and to either be placed in the container, in the refrigerator, or out to serve for Thanksgiving. I highly recommend cooking this at least two days before Thanksgiving because the flavors just taste so much better when it's had time to rest. And I like my cranberry sauce cool. If you like it warm, then go ahead and put it on the table or warm it up before you place it on the table. Before you put it in the fridge, make sure you mix in those orange segments into the sauce. Make sure it's mixed very well. As you can see, this is, it's gonna have like a citrusy cranberry taste to it. Um, in every bite and that's the whole purpose of making those bite-sized oranges. Now cover it up and put it in the fridge. It's great for two I weeks. I started planning my Thanksgiving menu in May. If you've watched me for a moment or two, I always say start planning for your holidays, the expensive holidays, months in advance so that way you're ready for when it comes and it's not a financial bur burden when you have to buy all the things. So I plan my recipes, what's going to be on the table, uh, coming November, set who's coming, start inviting people, family, figuring out if they're going to be able to make it or not. And then, of course, writing down all the ingredients I would need for each of the recipes and the ones that are either for the freezer that I can buy that can be frozen or pantry staples. I'll go start buying those throughout the months to come so that way it's not such a burning when November hits. Now on August, when it comes, we're starting to narrow out. August and September, I revisit the menu, see if I wanna add something or delete it, and then check in to see who will be attending. So that way um, I'm not caught off guard. Obviously there might be one or two more additions when November hits, but that's easy to plan for and to incorporate into the menu. Many of you might say, okay, well, that's quite a menu to plan. And I don't know if I want to sit in the kitchen all day and cook. And I understand that. Being a working mom with two kids and a schedule that sometimes can be light and other times can be crazy, planning ahead is essential for me. So I'm going to let you know that that mac and cheese, you can freeze, like I mentioned before. You can make that months ahead of time and no one will ever know that you made it ahead of time and you froze it. No one will ever know. Just remember, grate your cheese, don't buy it already grated in those packages. The green bean casserole, I'm choosing to make mine actually on a Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday before Thanksgiving, just because, I don't know, I just figure I have the time and it doesn't put that much more effort in my week. And, or if you choose that that's not gonna fit in your schedule, you can freeze that. I would say the recipe for this with the contents, I would freeze it up for maybe three months, no more than three months um, in preparation for Thanksgiving. The cranberry sauce, like I mentioned, it's actually better if it sits in the fridge for a couple days. That can last up to two weeks once you've made it. So friends, try it if you, if, you, if you don't like it, if you're not a fan, you have to try it. It is delicious. All of those can be planned ahead. So I try to plan out my menu ahead of time, Put my budget in place, figure out who's attending months and weeks ahead of time, and then buy ingredients throughout uh, throughout the months and weeks to come. So that way Thanksgiving comes, 
I'm pretty much all set on heat, heating, adding a little bit here or there, and then enjoying my day instead of in the kitchen, worn out. I'm in the kitchen a little bit and still enjoying my family throughout the day. Friends, if you haven't already, please subscribe. You don't want to miss episode two and three where I go over more Thanksgiving sides and of course how to make a delicious juicy turkey. By far, every year, it's to perfection. I don't care what type of turkey you buy. It is perfection. You don't want to miss episode three. All right, friends, if you are looking for maybe some other recipes to inspire you for Thanksgiving dinner, you can look at these episodes um, that YouTube thinks you should watch. And again, if you haven't already, please subscribe. You don't want to miss, 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 miss episode two. Thank you so much, friends, for joining me today. And make sure you stay safe and most importantly, stay encouraged.